Very excited to talk to you today. This film has so many different levels to it, uh, but I think the first thing I want to talk about is the levels of you uh, having written, directed, acted. I mean, was was that always part of the idea? And also, um, you know, what was the uh, the fun of it, but also maybe the challenges to doing that? Um, well, a pleasure to talk to you, Derek, um, and thanks for watching. Uh, so, you know, I always look at um, look, filmmaking, you know, it's really, everything is a question of necessity. And you have one need, which is you want to tell the story and you want to make the film. And then it's, you know, how do you do that by any means necessary, to quote someone smarter than myself. So, you know, it starts with the script. Um, you have this idea and, uh, and, and so how do you get it down? Um, well, you know, it's a process of trial and error. There's some inspiration and experimentation, but that's really where you're forming the building blocks of the idea. Um, once I get a draft of the script, I went first to Gary Oldman, um, whom I had met around the time of Darkest Hour and said, you know, will you take a look at this? And boom, he right away, he said, we got to do this. Um, let's come in, I'll produce it with you. Um, and then let's go get the other actors. So now you bring the actors, you have wonderful actors, Luke Evans, Michelle Rodriguez, Benjamin Lilly, Greg Kinnear, all these great people come in that's a lot of calling people that I know and begging them to come work for free. Uh, and, um, and then, but their input starts to inform it, you know? So you're not just working alone as a writer or as a director, you have, um, you have these wonderful um, actors helping you figure it out. And then that extends into, here we see a beautiful picture of Evangeline, the, uh, the cinematography um, and all the other artisans who come into the picture. Uh, so you, you form this team uh, and then you go on a mission together. And as the director, you know, you're really a, a kind of a conductor um, and assembling these talents and then trying to enable them to bring the best that they can to the forefront. I don't look at directing as, you know, let's do 80 takes and you stand there and I want you to move it like this. I'm really interested in what do the actors bring to it um, and what can we learn from them as students of human nature um, to make their characters even more round and, and, and help realize the story that I cooked up here in my bedroom. Um, so, uh, that's kind of uh, an organic process. Um, there's a lot of trial and error to it. I mean, it looks all buttoned up in the end, but you know, I, you come in here, I would have had a tinfoil hat on with editing rooms and string and you know, how to try this, try that. Um, you know, as far as acting for me, that was something very fun. I love actors. Um, and uh, Lenny Kravitz decided to pick me out of the blue and cast me to uh, be in one of his music videos. So I got the bug there playing a crazy director. And I said, here again, it was a question of necessity. The cast said, well, well where are we with the uh, the cop role? Uh, we got anyone for that? And I, I couldn't think of anyone good. So I said, well, maybe I could do it. They said, oh, yeah, oh great, great, go in. And so um, so that was a lot of fun. I guess it's up to you if I embarrassed the, the production or not. <laughs> um, but uh, but um, you know, certainly, certainly a great joy to do these things, uh, to have the privilege um, to be able to work in this way. Right. You know, uh, one thing about writing this is uh, I'm kind of interested about the flood of information that came in about the literal drug crisis and because and, you have to take it from the real truth of, of the world, too. I mean, um, what did you learn? And maybe is there any, any specific bullet points that were just the most shocking to you uh, and, uh, and maybe almost sobering as well about uh, the crisis in, in, in the country, even the world when it comes to opioids? Well, Derek, it's an excellent question. I mean, so little's really understood uh, about this topic, and that's part of why I wanted to make the film. You know, up until the last five, 10 years, there's been a bit of a demonization of the addict and saying, oh, what's, these are people on the fringes of society or what's, but you know, now you see opioid addiction is crossed over and it's your, it's your brother, it's your, your mother, it's your coworker. Uh, so everybody knows somebody whose life is touched by addiction. And the question is why? So when I started to investigate this, uh, I got together with some reporters at the LA Times. They turned me on to a wealth of information. You know, this starts at the top with the pharmaceutical companies, with the FDA, with the prescribing industry, doctors, you know, and a lot of money had come into the system. And, and I think when money comes into things, sometimes it creates uh, an incentive to, to pull the safeguards off the train. And so you're like, why, why all of a sudden are hundreds of thousands of people dying of opioid overdose? It doesn't make any sense. Well, as you look a little bit closer and you see, hey, we can IPO this company. We can make billions. Of oh, is there research that says uh, a lot of people get addicted? Well, we don't. Uh, who is that research good? Is it not? Maybe it's not good. Let's not pay attention to that. You know, 
and the person who has money to do a lot of lobbying um, can get these things through in society. That's something we explored in my last film, Arbitrage, with the financial crisis. But here it's really a crisis of blood and treasure. Uh, and, and, and you have millions of uh, people worldwide dying as a result of this. So <clears throat> that's something we wanted to shine a light on uh, and to show it starts at the top. Sure, there's criminals and we get into the gangsters in the movie, illicit diversion and trafficking. But, you know, Evangeline Lilly's character plays an architect, a woman very high up in society in many ways, with a successful life and becomes addicted through no fault of her own. And that's a story we hear over and over again. My friend had a back injury on the job where he works in construction. They gave him some oxy. Um, all of a sudden, he's an addict buying pills on the street. What is that? You right. know, wh how, how come the system's set up that way? And I think as we look here, we start to see, oh, there's money. There's money involved. Okay, now I get it. So uh, so I wanted to, to, to shine a light on that. Definitely. Well, the, the, the productization of America and its people is kind of interesting as well. Uh, one thing I do want to ask, too, though, is, uh, you know, when you first came up with this story before there was a visual, before you had even actors locked in, how did you first explain crisis to a friend? Um, I think I would say, you know, that it was a multifaceted look um, at what was going on in addiction and public health. Um, but it was a thriller. You know, I love thriller movies. I, I never want to be didactic or bore people. I think first you got to capture people on an emotional level. You've got to say, do I have a, a, a story that's going to take you on a ride um, and that's going to satisfy you as a piece of cinema? And so that's what I'm up to. And, you know, whether it's Michael Clayton or Traffic, as we've talked about, um, you know, I love those films. Um, but then, you know, it's also it's a story about people. Um, and it's a story, a, a personal story. I mean, all of this was influenced in people I knew, research that I did, true stories. Um, so, you know, I would say um, it's, uh, it's a personal film. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do want to ask, because I love asking directors this too, uh, was there a specific moment where just still kind of makes you smile where you thought this is it? Like this was great and everything else is going to fall into place? Uh, whether it was a specific time or maybe even off camera talking to the actors or uh, even a, a shot or something? Was there something that just kind of still makes you smile about how well it went? Well, this was a tremendously difficult production to pull off. I mean, we had, you know, 57 locations. We had a very limited budget. We had actors flying into Montreal from all over the world, um, you know, and uh, so there was a lot of logistical complexities. Um, but I would say, you know, when Gary Oldman goes into the uh, the boardroom of the Northlight Corporation, the pharmaceutical company, um, I remember shooting that scene. We had Gary, Veronica Paris, Luke Evans, wonderful actors. Um, and I had this location. I saw it. I remember I had scouted it and I got this building. It looked like it was out of some tech HR Geiger thing. And, you know, we did this scene and it really just it played off the page. And you can see the building here, uh, you know, in the background. And we uh, we owned that building for the day we rented it. So here we had this massive corporate structure. We had these incredible actors. We had, you know, they were playing with fireworks. Um, and 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 Gary gets up in this climactic speech um, and says what he will or won't do. And I just thought, you know, wow, we captured some. We came a long way from my bedroom here. Um, here we are in this uh, top of the world, um, really getting the emotion. Very cool. Well I want to thank you very much for talking with us today. Uh, crisis is going to be something a lot of people are going to enjoy, but also it's probably going to hit home for a lot as well. Uh, you know, you were mentioning a lot of people who are going through medical issues. Unfortunately, I have some friends who have PTSD issues, and that led to their own personal crisis as well. Uh, so I thank you very much for making this film, and I hope you uh, enjoyed, uh, you know, making it and creating this new project. Thank you, Derek. A pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure. Have a great day.